this is Sean Chua from alevelh2chemistry.com Today we're going to talk about alkanes in organic chemistry Alkanes, a hydrocarbon, is saturated with carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds It's also non-polar in nature This makes alkanes very unreactive Having said that, alkanes still undergo two chemical reactions First it undergo combustion when reacting with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water vapor in complete combustion. Next, alkanes will react with halogens such as chlorine and bromine in the presence of UV light, sunlight or even heat to form new products. And they go through this using free radical substitution mechanism. Let us take a look at an example on free radical substitution of alkanes. Now the mechanism, free radical substitution, commonly also known as FRS, go through three steps. First is initiation, after that is propagation, and there is the last step called termination. Let's use an example, the simplest alkane that you can ever have, CH4-methane. Let's say it react with chlorine in the presence of UV light. It will then give you chloromethane, a halogenyl alkanes or sometimes called alcohol halides and hydrogen chloride. Now, in the first step, the initiation, the UV light will provide enough energy to break this CLCL bond, the chlorine bond inside here. And this is what we call homolytic fission. And this gives you two chlorine radicals. These radicals are very reactive, such that in the second step, in propagation, the chlorine radical that was produced earlier on in step 1 will then react with the methane molecule to form a CH3 methyl radical and HCl, hydrogen chloride. The radical, the methyl radical is still very reactive, so it will look for the second chlorine molecule and react with it to form the product chloromethane and the chlorine radical. Now, if you see here, the chlorine radical is still very active and it will go back to your propagation step 1 here to react with a new molecule of methane to form new methyl radicals and the steps repeats itself again. Now, this is known as a chain reaction such that sometimes we also call it free radical chain reaction. Now, you will see from initiation and propagation steps, there are a couple of radicals around. So these radicals will also meet each other in the termination step to form a new substance. So the chlorine radical and chlorine radical come together to form chlorine molecule. Um, the chlorine radical with the methyl radical will then form the product they are looking for, the chloromethane. Methyl radicals may also come together and this gives you CH3, CH3. This is your ethane molar Q. Now, so this is the three steps that you have to show in the exam when you talk about free radical substitution reaction or mechanism. Now, this FRS is actually not a very good method to form your chloroalkane, such as the chloromethane. There are two factors we need to consider. Number one is that what we call multi-substitution. What we have been doing over here is to form only a mono-substituted product. This is called mono-substitution. What happened is that this chloromethane that was produced over here in step 2 of propagation may react with the chlorine radical over here. So we take a look, I'm going to write it down. This chlorine radical will react with CH3Cl, break one of the CH bond, such that you will form a new radical called CH2Cl, and over here you have HCl. This radical will carry on to react with a new molecule of chlorine such that you'll get the product CH2, Cl2 and your chlorine radical. Now, this is your dichloromethane, which is not the product that you want, chloromethane. 
So this is one of the problems that chemists are facing in order to get a certain monochlorinated product. For this, we can still kind of uh, solve it uh, because we can encourage the formation of monochlorinated product over here uh, by doing one thing. We can use limited amount of the chlorine gas or we use excess amount of the organic compound, the methane or the alkene itself. In this way, you encourage the formation of more mono substituted pro duct. Now, the second problem of free radical substitution in order to get the monochlorinated product is what we call positional metals or positional issues. Now, I'm going to show you an example. Now, this positional issue uh, will only happen if you have a longer chain alkene and you will start with propane. Let me draw you a molecule of propane, which looks like this. Now, if you take a look, this is propane molecule, three carbon. When we do mono substitution, we realize that one of the hydrogen atoms over here will be substituted by a chlorine atom, all right, through the radicals. If you look at it very closely, there are three carbon here, the two carbon at the terminal, all right. We have hydrogen atoms that is at the same position. So this hydrogen atom is actually similar to this, similar to this. So if there's a chlorine that's attached here, or substituted here, here or here, it will be known as one chloropropane. Similarly, if these are the hydrogen atoms that are substituted by the chlorine. So let's say this is chlorine. So this will also be known as one chloropropane. They are the same. Now, however, if you look at the hydrogen atoms that attach to the second carbon right in the middle, I'll use black color to indicate this. If a chlorine is substituted here, then this will be known as two chloropro. Pain, which is obviously a different compound from the earlier one called one chloropro pain. In fact, they are known as isomers, and isomers are really two different organic compounds. Now, so this is something that chemists have a problem um, getting rid of, all right, to solve it. So once again, free radical substitution is not the best method to form chloro L. Kings, or we call it in general halogenol L kings. So, chemists actually use other methods to form such compounds, and we'll discuss this in other videos in the future. Hope you find the video discussion useful to you. Feel free to share this with your friends, and I look forward to you in the next video. Thank you.